time for yet another installment of CRCST exam question review. This is where we discuss, this is where we develop our thought process. We discuss the questions and the rationale behind the answers and try to build a logical view of the exam and develop strategies on how to take it and pass it. All right. Uh, as always, I want to remind you that um, transcribing these questions into the notebook and then transcribing them into some kind of a, um, a word processor will help to strengthen your knowledge and permanent retention of these questions. So write down the questions, write down the answer options and the rationale, the most salient points of the rationale. No need to write down every single one of my ramblings just the most salient points as to why this answer is the right answer. And uh, OK, off we go. So let's try the next question on my list of questions. Acceptable packaging materials must be specifically designed for sterilization packaging and approved by which of the following entities? OK, let's read the question one more time. Acceptable packaging materials must be specifically designed for sterilization packaging and approved by which of the following entities? Number one answer is OSHA. Number two, CDC. Number three, the FDA. And number four, as they like to throw us an easy one, NIOSHA. There's no such thing as NIOSHA. There's NIOSH, NIOSH which is the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. OK, this is the think tank um, behind OSHA uh, and they help to write policy for OSHA. Uh, obviously, that's not the case. Um, the OSHA is definitely not the case because it's occupational safety and health. CDC is definitely not anything like that because of their mission. It's it's different. And the people who approve anything for use with patient care, whether it has any direct or indirect contact with patient care is the FDA. So in this particular case, it's choice number three, FDA. OK, so Food and Drug Administration um, determines. What may touch the patient directly and, and indirectly, and that's the rationale behind the sensor. Once again, it's the FDA. Next question, which of the following low temperature sterilization methods needs a longer exposure time than other alternatives? Which of the following low temperature sterilization methods needs a longer exposure time than other alternatives? OK, option number one, ozone. Option number two, hydrogen peroxide slash gas plasma. Number three, liquid chemicals. Number four, ETO or ethylene oxide. So we have several possibilities. We know that both ozone and hydrogen peroxide, which is choices number one and two here, uh, are relatively fast acting um, uh, low temperature sterilants. Ethylene oxide does take a long time to sterilize. However, we do have one other option that doesn't necessarily spring to mind right away, but the secret lies in this question here, which of the following low temperature sterilization methods needs a longer exposure time than other alternatives. So we know that ethylene oxide does take a long time. But we also know that high level disinfectants or liquid chemicals, as they put it here, um, also sterilize. So we remember that high level disinfectants, all except um, the OPA or orthothelaldehyde, which does not sterilize, but glutaraldehyde and formaldehyde. And the statements in the book are if given enough time, they will sterilize. So that is a viable option and it does take longer than ethylene oxide. So in this particular case, section selection number three or liquid chemicals will be the right answer. Read the questions carefully, my friends. Devil is in the details. All right, next question. Okay. Which of the following is most crucial to steam sterilization process? Which of the following is most crucial to steam sterilization process. Number one, temperature. Number two, adequate air removal. Number three, water quality. Number four, the visibility of instrument in the package. Hmm, okay, interesting. 
So as always, multiple choice question two are usually bogus. And then it's always a choice between one and two. So it's always a 50 50 possibility. Let's take a look what we can throw out right away. We don't care about the visibility of instruments in the package because 90% of the time it is not unless you're doing uh, you know, peel pouches. Uh, but then again, most of our instrument sets are opaque. You don't see anything inside, bogus. Water quality doesn't matter because when you boil water for steam, steam is always pure. So it doesn't really, it's not the most crucial. Yes, you must use critical water, uh, or distilled water for steam um, development. But as far as sterilization process itself, it doesn't matter. So these two options, three and four, are gone. Now, then we have two possibilities, temperature and adequate air removal. Now, between these two, a little bit of thought is required. So let's think this through. Temperature is key. We, we have to have temperature. But we have to think a little bit outside the box here and to figure this out. So the question is, which of the following is most crucial to the steam sterilization process? See, temperature is a given. But then either through gravity air displacement or dynamic air removal, these are the two methods by which we remove uh, residual air from the chamber. If you don't remove the residual air from the chamber, sterilization will not be achieved because full steam saturation is not going to be possible. So on this token, I'm going to go with adequate air removal, okay, as the uh, most essential essential step, because we are taking into consideration that without the temperature, you're not going to develop the steam, and the steam development in gravity air displacement is used to remove the residual air, so to displace or to push out a residual air, because if you don't do that, there's no sterilization taking place, okay? so. Steve's choice here is adequate air removal. Think this through and remember my rationale. All right, on to the next question. Okay, the number of microorganisms on the contaminated object is known as which of the following? Number one, bio burden. Number two, validation. Number three, devalue. And number four, gauging solution. Ooh, well, this is an easy one. Let's toss out the stuff that we don't need. Validation, definitely not it. Uh, devalue, if you remember what devalue actually means, devalue that is the time that it takes to destroy 90% of all microorganisms. It's one of those interesting tidbits of information that they give us why I don't really know, but it's on the exam, so just remember what devalue is. Gauging solution, doesn't seem like it belongs here altogether. So the obvious answer here is number one, bio burden. I uh, hope that makes sense. Next question. There are different methods of arranging sterile stock. Which of the following is least likely to be one of those methods? Which one is the least likely to be one of those methods for arranging stock? Number one, departmentally. Number two, functionally. Number three, alphabetically. Number four, numerically. So. What are they asking here? What are they asking here? The methods of arranging stock. Sterile stock. Is the least likely. Well, we do sort them alphabetically. We do store them numerically. So these are good because we're asking for the least likely. Then. Functionally. No, we, you know, um, well, no, we do, we do set them up functionally. If you look at the pegboard system, they are spread out by function. You know, hemostats with hemostats, scissors with scissors, um, retractors with retractors. So departmentally, hmm, yeah, yeah, interesting. I'd go with departmentally. Stock may be arranged functionally, which is uh, related items grouped together, alphabetically by item name, numerically by stock number, and departmental arrangement is less likely to be used. Look through the chapter in the book for inventory management, and uh, the answer should be found over there. Let's look at the next question. All right, in terms of dry heat sterilization, the quantity of a liquid powder to be sterilized should be limited to 
that required for a single use application and should not ex should not exceed what? Well, interesting question. I haven't seen that uh, pop up on the exam so much. OK, so let's look at this one more time in terms of dry heat sterilization. There's not too many questions on dry heat sterilization on the exam. Um, but let me give you the right answer anyway. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can keep that. So in terms of dry heat sterilization, the quantity of liquid or powder to be sterilized should be limited to that required for a single use application and should not exceed. So what are they saying is, hey, don't sterilize stuff for later. Don't you don't, uh, you know, it's like you're cooking a big pot of soup at home for a week. OK, that's not what they're asking here. For us, we only cook one serving, so do not cook more than one serving. So what should that one serving size be? That's what they're asking in this question. What should you sterilize, whether it's liquid? Because we can sterilize certain liquids like like oils, uh, just not in steam sterilization and powder, too. So that's subjected to dry heat sterilization. So what they want us to remember here is that we only able to sterilize a single application and that is not to exceed one ounce. I'm not even giving you the other choices because they're not valid. I'm simply giving you the answer that we don't sterilize more than one ounce of powders or one ounce of liquids because that's the usual size of one application. OK, hopefully that makes sense. OK, um, I know this is not a a a big deal on the exam, but just throwing it in there because by some odd chance they may throw it in there. You never know. OK. Uh, containerized packaging systems have one or more of the following components, except containerized packaging systems have one or more of the following components, except number one, a means of securing the top to the bottom. Number two, a top that can be removed for a septic presentation of the contents. Three, an internal instrument that measures the temperature of the contents. And four, a means of identifying the contents. So what are they asking for here? Where they're looking for, hey, what do the containers have on them? Except a means of securing top to the bottom. Oh, absolutely. We're obligated to have a properly opening and closing lock. So everything should be working. So that's a that's a go. A top that can be removed for a septic presentation of the contents. Oh, absolutely. All packages must provide for sterile presentation. An internal instrument that measures the temperature of the contents. Well, you know that's not true because we put chemical indicators in there for that. So I'd say that this is the right one. Let's let's look at the last one. A means of identifying the contents. Yes, because our uh, containers come with spaces where we can put uh, instrument identification. Uh, or uh, or package identification in them. So I'm going to go with number three, an internal instrument that measures the temperature of the contents. It doesn't come with it. All right, next question. Hydrogen peroxide destroys microorganisms by which process? We have four options. Aeration. No, aeration is the process of ethylene oxide, uh, the final step to remove uh, the residue, ethylene oxide residue. Circulation. Definitely not. It's not uh, uh, a method of uh, destruction. We have oxidation and alkylation. Alkylation belongs to ethylene oxide. So oxidation is what kills during hydrogen peroxide. That would be choice number three. That's oxidation. It's also for ozone. Same thing. All right, let's do one more question and we'll call that a session. Which of the following is a consequence of not maintaining a steam sterilizer? Which one is the consequence of not maintaining a steam sterilizer? Number one, more difficult to sterilize. Number two, interfere with air and steam evacuation. Number three, will take longer to cool after sterilization. And number four, more time to sterilize. You know, it's a tough one. So let's look at the question one more time. Which of the following is a consequence of not maintaining a steam sterilizer? It's a bit of a vague question, but um, uh, let's think about what the uh, part of steam sterilizer maintenance rests with us. Because remember, they're asking from our perspective. 
we're not doing preventive maintenance on the machines. These are technicians that come in from Biomed or from the manufacturers who come in to service the equipment. So they're looking from us. What do we do to, to service uh, the sterilizers? Well, the most important function, which is done daily, well, is to clean the drain. The other one is to check and to clean the door gasket. But it's the drain that must be cleaned. And if you don't clean the drain, it's the most common cause of wet packs. And wet packs are caused by improper or inability of the machine to evacuate steam or air for that matter. So if the drain is clogged, you got problems. So over here, once again, the last question, which of the following is a consequence of not maintaining a steam sterilizer? Maintaining by us. More difficult to sterilize? Well, yes, it's true, but not quite there. Interfere with air and steam evacuation? I believe that's the right answer. Number three will take longer to cool and to, uh, after sterilization. That's not true. And more time to sterilize? That's also not true. So we have two possible choices. More difficult to sterilize and interfere with air steam evacuation guaranteed with my logic that's the right answer i would go with that and uh that's it for now i'll see you soon with more recordings hope you enjoyed this one talk to you soon